What's going on, everyone? Happy Wednesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Wednesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Wednesday, June 19th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that can be a health threat to you. Let's face it, there's a lot of viruses out there. And ever since the COVID pandemic started, it seems like more and more viruses are popping up with no explainable reason. But guess what? Something else has happened. The media, the news, you know, TV, when you watch the news, how often do you hear much about COVID? How often do you hear much about what's going on with these other viruses? You don't. And you need somewhere where you can turn to where you can find out about them. That's what we do here. You want to stay informed? Subscribe down below. Give this a thumbs up. Hit that notification bell. Share these videos with anyone you know. And leave a comment down below. All right. Starting off today with some news stories. And... Maybe you've heard about this, maybe you haven't. There is a corruption trial that's ongoing in the state of New Jersey. Democratic Senator, at least I think he's a Democrat, uh, Senator Bob Mendez. The corruption trial is ongoing. Well, it's once again ongoing. Why? Because Fred Daves tested positive for COVID, and he's one of the people involved in this whole entire court battle that's ongoing, and he was one of the co-defendants. Well, when someone tests positive, everything comes to a grinding halt, still in this day and age. So, yes, COVID is still disrupting corruption trials and any other trials in court cases. All right, Glenn Close is hit hard, not only with COVID, but get this, COVID and RSV at the same time, forced to delay filming Knives Out 3. So, yeah, now, this is not happening in the United States. I believe this is happening over in London. Yes, this is happening over in London. She was filming, and she got hit hard. Mind you, she's 77 years old, and this is getting to be um, delayed because she is dealing with COVID and RSV at the same time. The good news is, it sounds like maybe she's starting to feel better and that she'll be able to start filming once again soon. Now, London, like the United States, it's summertime right now. So uh, RSV doesn't happen as frequently as at this time of year, but ever since the COVID era, it seems like any time of year these different viruses can do their thing. If we were talking about Australia, it was more likely because down there it is still wintertime, but hey, this is London, and it is also summertime in London. So yes, someone hit with COVID and RSV at the same time in a summer months. All right, bird flu, H5N1, found at five more dairy farms, including three in Idaho and two in Texas. So we're not adding any more states today so far. We'll see. Day's not done. We're not adding any more states yet, but we are adding to the number of outbreaks in states that already had outbreaks. Moving on to our next story now. Sweden saw 62% rise in children's diabetes diagnosis. And get this, look what else they put in the headline. One reason could be COVID-19. We have a section dedicated just on our website for studies on COVID and diabetes. There's quite a few of them. I'm sure there's some that I haven't even added from prior to when we had the website, but it's something that can really happen. And unfortunately, it's hitting kids hard in Sweden right now. I would hate to see what the actual number is in the United States. I, w I would like to see it, but I would hate to see it because I bet it's not a good number. All right, moving on to our next, this time in France. People in France are being advised to self-isolate and wear a mask as an expert warns that COVID is not gone and hospital cases continue to rise. 52% increase week on week in hospital emergency visits for COVID-related issues. Again, COVID-related issues. There's been this whole argument that it can go back to possibly maybe the beginning of the pandemic or back to a statement from New York. There's many different cases where this was brought up, but it doesn't matter. To me, it really doesn't matter if the reason that they're showing up for, well, it's not because they had COVID, it's because of something else. There's a couple of reasons why that does not matter to me. The more people that are showing up positive with COVID, that's more infection and more disease being thrown into a hospital, and that's more risk to people that are showing up for other things. Say someone's showing up because they're having a heart problem. They're not positive for COVID, but the number of COVID cases at that hospital is increasing whether it be they showed up because of COVID or not, people showing up positive with COVID's increasing. Well, guess what? We're in a day and age where universal masking is not a thing in healthcare. It's not really a big thing. 
So guess what? If more people are showing up to the hospital positive for COVID, whether it is because they have COVID or not, guess what that means? There is more chances that people did, that did not even go to the hospital for COVID could get infected, which is why universal masking really needs to be a thing in the hospital. And guess what else? You also learn something else. Well, if more people are showing up to the hospital uh, positive for COVID, though be it whether it's because of COVID or something else, it does also suggest that, hey, in your community, COVID is on the rise at that time. So either way, it's not a good, nothing good comes out of it. What good comes out of more people showing up to the hospital? I mean, someone high risk who needs to seek emergency care, who does not have COVID, but needs to seek emergency care because they're having a heart problem, they're having a breathing problem, and they go to health care where there's no masking, and the number of people in the emergency room with COVID is high. Well, guess what? Say they get a case of COVID. It may not end well. I'm seeing stories left and right of people saying, you know, so-and-so who I know or a relative went to the hospital because they had an issue and then caught COVID and then died. It's happening. It's a real issue. We need the number of people testing positive for COVID to get down. We need it to keep it down. All right, moving on. I don't want this to turn into a big rant video. We will get an update on UK's numbers tomorrow, and we will also get an update right now on the allergy. And, oh, now, take a look at this. We have red once again. 41% of the country is in low to medium status, but there is red once again in Oregon. Never a good thing, but there is good news here, and I'm going to really harp on this. The southeast has been really good the past couple days. Texas, well... You're dealing with the effects of a tropical storm that's going to make landfall in Mexico. That is Tropical Storm Alberto. Also, take a look here in the Northeast. We do have some allergy levels, and my allergies were bothering me yesterday. Taking a look at air qualities around the United States, it should not be a surprise that we are going to see quite a bit in the way of orange and yellow because, you know, the heat, it's building in the Northeast, it's building in the East. Take a look at this. You can see right around that ridge dome, really uh, seeing some uh, bad air qualities through New England, New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts, New York State, Ohio, Indiana, on and on it goes. Chicago, look at that. Chicago's not doing well at all. I'm actually seeing some red there. And California, the wildfires are starting up, and they're only going to get worse. You're not expecting much in the way of rainfall. I'm not seeing any rainfall for California for quite some time. So, obviously, your air quality is going to get bad. Let's take a look at heat-related illnesses, and we can see they're starting to increase in the northeast, in the middle and in the east. Uh, not bad in Pennsylvania. I suspect next week this will fill in more. The west coast, look at that, California, starting to fill in, and it's filled in a little bit more in Texas as well. If you want to learn more about and whether I do have another X page where I do that, it's called Climate Data Report. You can see there, we're starting to grow there, and I like that. Let's keep that growing. So we can keep more people informed with what's going on. And, of course, we do have another YouTube channel, Climate Data Report, where we did talk about Tropical Storm Alberto forming. I did a YouTube short for that. And I did do a full video on the extreme heat in the east, the flight in the south, and your wildfire threat out on the west coast as well. Taking a look at Philadelphia today, don't mind what it says here. They made a little goof up. That should say 802 EMS incidents, not 160. They got the fire and they got the EMS all mixed up. So uh, 802 EMS incidents, which is actually, you know, for how hot it is, you would think it would be a little bit higher. So I'm actually, uh, yeah, it's over 800. Yes, that's a lot, but it could be worse. And we'll have to see. The hottest days are yet to come. Taking a look now, what is going on in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. And we can see here, not too bad. There is one stroke call. Uh, you never know. It could be heat-related stroke. Some other things going on. I'm seeing rescue. That's never a good thing. Let's take a look at Chester County, Pennsylvania. We have to refresh this. And again, we're seeing a stroke, sick person. Not too busy right now, which is a good thing. We like to see that because on hot days, it could be oh so much busier. Taking a look now at some wastewater data for Pennsylvania. It updates twice a week. We forgot to do it yesterday. It updates again on Thursday. And we can see here in southeastern Pennsylvania, where I am, there is no change this week. That's good because remember, there was a large increase last week in Abington, Montgomery County. Up in the Lehigh Valley, Allentown area, Bethlehem area, you're starting to see an increase. Scranton seeing an increase. Harrisburg, which is the capital of Pennsylvania, is seeing an increase. And then Franklin County, down by Chambersburg, increased there. State College, with the students being gone, is seeing an increase at this time. 
There is also an increase in Mercer County and a large increase at this time in Westmoreland County, which is just east of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Walgreens this week. We can see the Walgreens positivity rate nationally is at 30%. It was 27.1% last week. That is a difference of up 2.9%. And testing was up ever so slightly. All right, let's take a look at some more wastewater sites. First, we'll look at nationally. And I want to give you a full disclaimer. This is likely to change. See how it's showing straight upward? That is likely a glitch. It does this a lot. And the very first time that I saw it make a big change like that, it got me, and I posted it on X, and gosh, that uh, it just went v viral, literally. So, yes, it's showing this big upward trend. That's going to get corrected. So, overall, it may still be going up, but it's, uh, trust me, I don't think it's going straight up like a rocket ship like that. And that's only one update. If it was like two, three, four, five updates, then we would have a big concern. RSV is dropping. m one's A, ever so slight rise. m one's a B, again, ever so slight rise. It, it's doing this with several different viruses. I don't know why. COVID's not the only one. HMPV is dropping at this time. Norovirus nationally is in the medium level. All right, let's take a look at a couple of wastewater sites. Let's go to Arkansas. We haven't looked at Harrison, Arkansas in a while. And Harrison, Arkansas. Now, here, this is not one, two, three, but four updates now that are showing a big rise. And some wastewater sites that have done this, this is four updates, at least four, maybe more. Uh... Some are legitimately doing this. Hawaii was legitimately doing this. We saw the emergency department visits, and we're not going to get back into that discussion again with emergency department visits. You know how I feel about that. If someone's positive for COVID, and they show up at the um, emergency department for a different reason, well, guess what? That's one more case within the facility, and that just only makes the chance of other people that are there for other reasons getting infected because... You know, masking is not a deal in the hospital. Again, we're not getting back into that, but you can see here there is an increase ongoing at Harrison. RSV, influenza A, influenza B, all low at this time. HMPV dropping, and norovirus has kind of flattened out a little bit at this time. No MPOX issues, and also hepatitis A at this time. There were a couple of detections back in April. All right, let's do one more wastewater site, and then we'll do... Maybe a few more tomorrow, if it's not a busy news day. Let's go down to Florida, shall we? What's going on there? How about we go to South Orange County, Florida, where we do see there was a rise, then dropped a little bit, and then just one of those one update things. So it could be dropping a little bit in South Orange County, Florida. And this is 183,000 population. RSV, influenza A, influenza B, all not an issue at this time. HMPV is flat, and norovirus is dropping at this time, though still says high. I would say, yeah, I guess it is medium to high. Mpox, no issues. Hepatitis, the most recent detections were back in April. Alrighty, moving on now to Canada. 14 sites are showing an increase. 39 sites are showing no change. 12 showing a decrease. This is for COVID. One site is high at this time. 8 are moderate and 14 are low at this time. All right, moving on to some other CDC data. We get a new update on the variant on Friday. KP.3 is 25% of the cases. KP.2 is 22.5%. LB.1 is 14.9%. KP.1.1 is 7.5%. And that old JN.1 variant is just 3.1%. Yes, 3.1% of the cases. All right, taking a look at New Jersey for today. New Jersey has 198 hospitalizations, seven people on a ventilator, but full disclaimer about this. Again, I just said 198 hospitalizations. That's only with 53 out of 70 hospitals reporting. That's a relatively high number for, that's the number we would expect to see if 69 out of 70 were reporting. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens when we do get a uh, number closer to that 70 mark once again. Obviously, it's going to be higher than this, so they are definitely starting to see a rise in New Jersey. Seven people on a ventilator, 28 people in the ICU, discharges at this time. 27 discharges, and drum roll please with New York. The dates say here that it updated today, but when I refresh it, it's still showing the same numbers from yesterday. Same thing when we go to the hospitalizations. It's the same number from yesterday. I would like to know, did New York State have that little bit of a rise today? It is possible we're going to see a really high case number tomorrow out of New York State. Let me explain why. First off, they didn't update today. So you might have today plus tomorrow, unless they do separate the days. I hope they do. 
Plus, on Thursdays, we do get the update out of New York City. And I believe on Thursdays, that's when they add that into the data here. It used to be Wednesdays was the reinfection data got added in. Now it's Thursdays they add in the New York City data because New York City does update on Thursdays. Since we did not get anything here, let's just go back to uh, CDC for a second. I want to do one more thing for you today and let's take a look at a couple states' uh, hospitalizations. Delaware, what's going on there? Are your hospitalization or your emergency department visits rising in Delaware? Well, at this time, they're relatively flat. Let's go uh, somewhere else in the United States. How about we go on? Here we go, Mississippi. Now, some of these, okay, it loaded. Mississippi, emergency department visits, people positive for COVID. Not, not going to state whether or not, oh, maybe it's something else. They just happen to be positive for COVID, or maybe it is COVID. It's rising at this time. So, in other words, the percent chance of you getting infected, having to visit healthcare because there's no masking, is upward. Taking a look now at what's going on in the state of Maine. And Maine has not been seeing a rise yet. It's just bouncing around off the bottom. And finally, let's end on Georgia. We'll see what's going on there. And in Georgia, they were seeing a rise, but look at that. It's actually starting to drop in Georgia. I like to end on a positive note. And by surprise, because I haven't looked at Georgia, Georgia is starting to drop. That is a good thing. And you know what? That's, uh, wow. Compared to other waves, that's dropping relatively low. But as we know, there will be future waves. When the next wave is going to be, no one really knows. Alrighty, folks. That does it for the Wednesday edition of the pandemic update. If you want to see more updates like this, subscribe down below. Leave your comments down below. And I know I'm a bit behind on some of the comments. I will try and catch up on them later on today. Give this a thumbs up if you like the video. Maybe you learned something today. And that's a reason to give it a thumbs up. Of course, share these videos with anyone you know. And remember to hit that notification bell. That will tell you when I do my future updates. Alrighty, folks. Have a great day. I will see you all again tomorrow. Until I see you again next time, stay safe and thanks for watching.